This trend of recent female entries and ostensibly as they side with men online and in male spaces, even publicly now, all of a sudden loving maleness and decrying feminism, questioning feminism. Gentlemen, it is not because women have suddenly found their compassion buttons for you as men after 50 years. No, women aren't for men all of a sudden. They are even more for women than they've ever been before because their party's over and they need men to fix their mess. It doesn't take a genius to comprehend that since women are the overwhelming users of antidepressants past midlife and into their older age, that there's suddenly little wake-up calls. One thing they won't actually acknowledge, the glaring and obvious truth about men now, is that men are not approaching females anymore. Women have wanted to make us invisible for a while, and they've succeeded. Men have walked away, and in women's eyes, They've cleared most maleness from the landscape, which includes most men. It's funny. It used to be that the happiness trajectory for men had women in it. It was almost a target to have a happy life. Now, happiness is almost assured without women. It's a complete 180 degree turn to what the human species has been doing since the beginning of time. Men have slowly and successively over generations of divorce, false allegations, trusting women and then ending up fleeced and scammed, and the success of giving and concessions and handouts to women only to be hated for it, men have just left. But make no mistake, men have left you after you have left men. Let me repeat this to you ladies, men have left you after you had left them. You can't burn a bridge and then turn around and wonder why it isn't there for you to cross again. Men are now happy away from you and as contentedly invisible as you've pushed us and forced us to be away from you. I was born in the 70s uh, and this narrative I've witnessed over the last few generations, you know. Men are pigs. We don't need men. It's now women's turn to run the world. Hand over the keys, men, and just fuck off. Women have figuratively decided to divorce all men in society because women rule. And because in their eyes, men have had their turn in history and now it's women's turn. The underlying theme is disappear men. So men have successively been disappearing generation after generation more and more through gynocentrism from speech in what men can and cannot say to public roles where women just say, give us all your power, men. We want women to be the sole reality on the landscape. So it's just this successive recede men, become invisible, disappear. It's been a continual and successive yes dear from generation to generation of men. And now that women have effectively killed the masculine breed, they want it to return somehow. <laughs> from fucking where? <laughs> Who will mentor? Where will the lived masculine history come from to mentor any male? Books? Your feminist fucking theories? Well, plenty of women have been telling men how to be male for decades. You know, a generation of men raised by women, as Fight Club says. So now you've got this wholly female-focused breed of men. So what's the problem, ladies? You've got exactly the type of men you fashioned that you don't want, but you want exactly the type of men you ostensibly hate. Though, somehow... Fifty Shades of Grey is the top-selling book of all time. It's all really confusing. The invisible man you've demanded, ladies, that you've conditioned not to open his mouth or say or do anything without your say-so is the reality of what you have. So now women are saying, where are all the invisible good men? Now, because society has taken extreme measures to survive women's rule, with child rates plummeting, men creating groups and communities away from women, MRAs, MGTOW, etc, etc. I've started to notice this steady rise more and more of intentionally open anti-feminist women, ostensibly and finally it would seem on the side of men now, creating content and putting effort into videos and blogs and even sometimes in public discussion, thinking that it's important enough now to finally make the effort of solidarity with men. 
we think women are finally saying enough, but I think many men misread it as solidarity with them. It's not. It's simply women noticing that their heterosexual lives are fairly, at best, dull without men. And at worst, judging by the high numbers of middle-aged and older women taking more and more antidepressants than men, the difference between men and women's consumption of antidepressants past middle age is startling. Women are finally realizing the fruits of what their feminist fist pumping has got them is fucking cats and antidepressants. I've said it a few times before, men can't fix this current gulf between men and women for a few very prominent reasons. One, men are done trying to do any more for women after being continually duped or thrown away or used. Two, Women have a blind in-group preference that's been extensively discussed in our circles, which to women further means that men cannot factor into their discussions because of our toxic gender. That is, we're invisible, shut up, we don't exist. And three, and most importantly, because men are, in women's eyes, the patriarchal problem in the first place that wants to somehow hurt women. Never mind looking around in society at all the appliances, conveniences, and modernity that women love today. Men just need to shut up and let women run things because men have been exploiting and using them since the beginning of time, apparently. And since women now are the majority voters and control a trajectory of economic growth and frequency of daily spending, which is another reason why society and marketing listens to women's every whim, it is women, as I've said previously, it is women that will need to change the female in-group narrative toward men to get men's cooperation back in the generations to come. Now, in the generations you're still acting like bitches, good luck. Men like me who've grown up in the 70s, fuck all chance, and the generations afterwards, it's still an uphill battle. Traditionalism is dead. Those with this old-fashioned soft spot for men and women getting along and, you know, just let bygones be bygones and return to the good old days of nuclear families with men in suits and brill cream slick through their hair and women twirling toward the dining table with their doo-wop dresses holding a tray of roast chicken. Wake up. Those days are over. Look around. Today's landscape shows you that it's over. So this shrinking man that, that has become virtually invisible in the social landscape, women have created this. And so now these traditionalists that want, you know, men to come back on board and men and women to get along and fix things, traditionalists think that this rift between men and women now is some sort of unsafe bridge now to cross for men in terms of getting married, that men need to somehow roll up their sleeves and fix this antiquated bridge between men and women to get society back on track again. Gentlemen, and more importantly, ladies, there is no fucking bridge to fix. The bridge isn't broken. It's burnt. It's not there. It's ash. No, the bridge isn't broken. It's not there anymore. And women burnt it. As far as men are concerned, women can sit on the other side of that chasm of mistrust for as long as they like. We're quite happy on this side with our hobbies, friends, and peace of mind. Rebuilding that old traditionalist bridge is like asking men to rebuild a tape deck. It's old technology. It does not work today. Women just naively expect that nature will take its course, but just think about how big the rift is for men to not want sex as much as they wanted to. You've got men in their horniest prime, in their late teens and 20s, not wanting to have anything to do with you. The risk to be with you and be around you is so great that everything else, even being alone, is preferable. Women thought it would be this forever notion of choosing the right guy. But what happens when men aren't fucking asking you anymore? Men aren't in your landscape because you've made it barren. You've made men invisible. You've made men disappear in every facet of society. And now you're asking for them back. Why can't invisible men rebuild society? Where are all the good invisible men that I hate? Women's trajectory, I'm sure they thought was a given, you know. I'll just fluff around and then in my late 20s or now 30s, I'll just any meeny miny mo pick the best guy. But what happens when men aren't asking you? You can't push for men to shut up, to stop mansplaining, to stop manspreading, 
you know, for men to give you their positions in work and just disappear from the work environment because there's not enough women. We need to replace men with women. This continual disappear men, disappear men, disappear men. Then you ask, where are all the men? At the same time saying there are too many men over here and over there. It's this contradictory duality that men often pull their hair out in trying to figure you out. And then after a while, they just fucking give up and go their own way. It's not enough that we used to give you seats on the lifeboat. But now, even if there are seats on the lifeboat, you don't want men on it because of your contempt for men. So again, ladies, the invisible men that you wanted are not going to rebuild a bridge that you burnt because it's not there. Go your own way, gentlemen. Later. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon once you've subscribed to be notified of my next video. And feel free to donate to me through Patreon or PayPal. It keeps me creating videos and I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys.